Welcome. My name is Austin Hinchy. I'm a clinical pharmacist at Oklahoma State University Medical Center. And today I'll be discussing interleukin-6 inhibitors, Janus kinase inhibitors, and their role in the treatment of SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19. Let's start off by looking at why we believe these agents may be beneficial. It's been found that there can be high levels of cytokines released specifically IL-2, IL-6, IL-7, interferon, gamma, TNF-alpha, and ferritin. Procalcitonin is not typically elevated unless there's another infection such as pneumonia also present. These cytokines have their own unique role in propagating the inflammation cascade. These hyperinflammatory response uh, that you can see during COVID-19 is closely related to cytokine storm or uh, cytokine release syndrome. When this cytokine profile is found, it's been associated with an increased severity of illness and can progress to ARDS. IL-2, IL-7, and TNF-alpha were found to be higher in ICU patients compared to non-ICU patients. In a Chinese study that looked at 150 patients in Wuhan, uh, there was IL-6, CRP, and ferritin levels were found to be significantly increased uh, in deceased patients compared to those who survived, indicating a possible link to mortality if a patient has this hyperinflammatory response. So the thinking is that if we can reduce the release of these cytokines, that we can reduce the severity of illness and hopefully improve patient outcomes. Looking at this diagram, we can see how cytokines normally function to induce an inflammatory response. In this example, IL-6 binds to the membrane-bound IL-6 receptor, causing dimerization of the two glycoprotein 130 units. Uh, when these proteins dimerize, it forms a cascade and, and starts a chain reaction of, of enzymes downstream, such as the JAK-STAT reactions, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, these membrane-bound proteins can also be cleaved and form soluble IL-6 receptors that float around in the serum and function the same way to bind IL-6 and then eventually bind to the glycoprotein-130 receptors. The next step in the cytokine pathway is the Janus kinase or the JAK-STAT pathway. Um, looking at this slide, the Janus kinase is activated after cytokines bind to the receptor. It can be IL-6, IL-2, or any of the other cytokines. It's a type of tyrosine kinase receptor that, for, that phosphorylates proteins to transcribe genes. Uh, the Janus kinase phosphorylates the signal tra transducer and activator of transcription, which is the STAT portion of JAK-STAT. Once phosphorylated, these proteins will migrate to the nucleus and, uh, and induce the transcriptions of target genes, which often releases more cytokines into the serum. So if we can stop the JAK-STAT pathway, we can hopefully stop the release of more cytokines and slow down this the cytokine storm. So now that we can see how those pathways lead to inflammation, we can look at different methods to try to stop them. The first drug class we'll look at are IL-6 inhibitors, which include tocilizumab, cerilumab, and siltuximab. These are monoclonal antibodies that bind to both membrane-bound and soluble IL-6 receptors but don't allow the glycoprotein-130 units to dimerize, stopping the transduction of the signal. The indication of use for these drugs is an elevated serum IL-6 level. Tocilizumab has been the most studied drug in COVID-19 due, due to the fact that it's the only one in this class of the three to be approved for cytokine release syndrome. It's approved for doses up to four milligrams per kilogram, up to a max of 800 milligrams for cytokine release syndrome. Although in COVID-19, doses of up to eight milligrams per kilogram have been used. This dose may be repeated after a minimum of eight hours and if symptoms uh, continue to persist or worsen. The most common adverse effect in this class of drugs is acute liver failure. So use caution if patients with pre, in patients with pre-existing hepatic disease. And then there's also an increased risk of infection um, which is a little concerning since these patients are already at high risk for infection and may or may not have an underlying pneumonia already. Um, but the infection is more commonly seen when patients are on other immunosuppressive therapies such as corticosteroids 
and it is a black box warning for these medications. For JAK inhibitors, they work inside the cell to prevent Janus kinase from phosphorylating the transcription proteins, which then halt gene expression. Um, and this process stops the release of more cytokines as well. Janus kinases are also believed to play a role in the endocytosis of some viruses, including COVID-19. Uh, some of the receptors that are thought to be a mechanism of viral entry, like the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptors, uh, use JAK-STAT as the phosphorylating agent after the virus binds to it. Theoretically, by inhibiting these kinases, we can reduce the amount of viral entry into cells. Um, baricitinib is the most prominent drug in this class that's being studied for COVID-19, where it's being, looked at, it's being used as monotherapy or also in combination with antivirals like lopinavir and ritonavir and or hydroxychloroquine as well. Doses being studied for this drug are two to four milligrams daily. Um, it's an oral tablet, and the duration of therapy ranges from seven to 14 days based on what study we're looking at. The same adverse effects apply to this class of drugs, um, acute liver failure, and then a black box warning for an increased risk of infection. Now we'll look at one of the studies, of one of the trials to be completed thus far um, regarding the agent tocilizumab. Uh, this is the tocilizumab treatment in COVID-19, a single center experience. This was performed in Wuhan, China, and it's a, res a retrospective analysis of 15 patients who received tocilizumab. The average age of the patient was 73 years old, and 12 out of the 15 were male. All patients were COVID-19 po positive and were stratified by disease severity. Uh, moderate illness was if they saw ground glass opacities on x-ray. Uh, patients were labeled severe if they had respiratory rates greater than 30 breaths per minute or they had decreased oxygen sats. And critical is if they required mechanical ventilation. CRP and IL-6 levels were obtained at baseline and, re and retested up to seven days after the therapy with tocilizumab. There was not a standard dosing regimen used. Um, with the oral, with single doses, they range anywhere from 80 to 600 milligrams. Uh, the average cumulative dose was 479 milligrams, with the most common dose being 480 milligrams. If you look at the five patients who received multi dose regimens, their cumulative dose is slightly higher at 584 milligrams. However, a lot of their single doses were lower than the average for the single dose group. Uh, corticosteroids were, could be used in this treatment. It was kind of just up to the physicians to add them on or not, and eight of those patients received them. However, corticosteroids are not typically recommended during um, treatment of COVID-19. Um, they are sometimes recommended with tocilizumab in like RA patients. So CRP and IL-6 levels were found to be elevated in all patients at baseline. CRP levels decreased in all patients except for one. Um, that patient was in the critical, critically ill group. IL-6 levels spiked initially after treatment with tocilizumab, but eventually decreased in 10 out of the 15 patients. Um, this is probably due to IL-6 being cleared by IL-6 receptors. So when tocilizumab binds to the receptors instead of the IL-6 um, ligands, the IL-6 cannot be cleared from the blood, and so that likely resulted in the spike in levels. Of the five patients who did not see a reduction in IL-6 levels, three of those patients uh, dis were deceased at the end of the study, and two had a worsening of their disease state. Uh, the two that had worsening, one was in the critically ill group and one was in the severely ill group. Corticosteroids did not appear to make a difference in the outcomes, and no serious adverse effects were noted due to the study drug in this case. Um, the fact that the three deaths in the study and one of the two patients who had worsening in their disease were in the critically ill group shows that tocilizumab treatment may be more effective earlier on in the disease progression, and rather than waiting until the patient has developed ARDS and is ventilated. A few other case reports have been done. 
Um, this report looks was from Italy, and it looks at a patient um, who's 42-year-old male with a past history significant for uh, metastatic sar 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 sarcomatoid clear renal cell carcinoma. Uh, he was admitted to the hospital for a fever of unknown origin and started on broad-spectrum antibiotics. On day six of his hospital stay, uh, his COVID-19 PCR did pop positive, and he was started on lopinavir, ritonavir combination, um, which was the standard of care at their facility, and he was continued on that for five days. Over the next few days, the patient had a return of his fever and had worsening dyspnea, requiring the use of supplemental oxygen. On day eight, the patient was started on tocilizumab, and he received an eight milligram per kilogram dose that was repeated eight hours later. Over the next few days, the patient began to improve clinically gradually until he was able to be weaned from supplemental oxygen on day 12. Uh, the patient continued to have a full clinical recovery and was discharged by the end of this um, case report. While it was a positive outcome, since it does look at a patient who's already immunocompromised due to his uh, cancer, uh, it may not be generalizable to the non-cancer population. And the National Institute of Health has gathered a panel of experts who publish recommendations for both classes of medication. They said there's insufficient data to recommend either for or against the use of IL-6 inhibitors. And they state that due to the broad immunos immunosuppressive effects, and lack of clinical trials, JAK inhibitors are currently not recommended for the treatment of COVID-19. These are both A3 recommendations, meaning they're strong recommendations based on expert opinion. Um, hopefully when more clinical trials come out, we can have guidelines based off of data rather than expert opinion only. Uh, but tocilizumab appears to have the most data available supporting its use. Um, there are multiple studies currently enrolling and in progress for both classes of these medications um, that are set to finish up later this year. Um, but currently, uh, we would recommend tocilizumab as a potential therapy in patients with worsening uh, COVID-19 symptoms, and most likely before they get intubated. Um, Thank you for joining me today. If there's other questions that you may have, please feel free to reach out to me and you can email me at my email at the bottom right here. Thanks again.